uh, the more space you can give them. It's like it's one of the reasons I don't keep Spilotes. It's because I just don't feel like I can give them enough space. I love Spilotes. I, I would get them in a heartbeat if I could set them up in something that was you know massive for them to be able to really stretch out and and, and uh, show their behaviors. Um, if you're on the Spilotes Facebook page, I just posted some videos recently of what I I viewed as courting behavior between our Spilotes at the zoo. As our male, he was all puffed up, which you normally associate with defensive, but he was doing it in front of the female and he was waving back and forth kind of like this. And then he was doing these like, I don't know, undulating movements. And it, it didn't register to me as defensive at all. It went on for over two hours. Um, oh my God. And afterwards, after he was done puffing, they actually locked up. So I was like, well, this is, you know, interesting behavior that you would never see if you had this, you know, eight foot Spilotes in a four foot vision gauge, you know, yeah, a rat just can't happen like that. It just, it can't, you can't keep snakes like that. You know, Kribos in, in tubs and Spilotes in tubs and all, all these large, you know, active colubrids, you just shouldn't do it. You know, I've, I've had the privilege of uh, seeing these animals in the wild. You know, most of these species I've seen when I've traveled to South America or Central America and when you just see one, you know, crossing this huge road or this, you know, grassy field or something, you're like, wow, you know, I, I, I couldn't provide, you know, nearly enough space for, for this animal because they really are so active in there. I think there's so much behavior that we haven't even witnessed because we haven't been keeping them, you know, in a, a manner that's appropriate. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things like will kind of shock you with a clue bird like that is how fast they can move. Like I was so used to my boas, which boas are like, you know, so slow and they're just like methodical about everything. Like they're not going to go anywhere fast. I can let them crawl around on the floor and come back in two hours and they're like, you know, yeah, 10 yeah. feet from where they started. They're not going anywhere. But the clue birds are just like, well, racers, you know, you know, when they call something a racer, <laughs> you know, it's going fast. That's, you know, they're, it's, they, they can move. And one mental exercise that I always say people should do is if you were in the wild or the natural habitat, maybe you see one of these animals, I can't, imagine picturing like your four foot by four by two in that environment to see how small that looks. It would, it would look like nothing in that environment. It never, it yeah, it never looks smaller until you vision it like that. And that's exactly, you know, what I do when I'm out there. And it's just, like, oh my God, you know, this yeah. it's almost cruel. Um, it's a yeah. I, I encourage people to get out there and go find the animals that they keep and watch how they they live out there. You know, you, I think you'd be surprised by the things that they do and, and the things that they require. Well, one thing that was interesting about Spilotes when I was in Belize, um, we were doing some crocodile surveys for more let's crocodiles, and we were on a river. We were spending a couple of days out there camping, and one of the local guys that was there, I was asking him, you know. Hey, let's find snakes in our downtime. You know, crocs are cool, but I, I want to find some snakes. And I was going through the field guide because they they have different names for everything down there. They don't call right. them tiger rat snakes. They have you know a local name. So I was like, what about this one here? I was pointing to the spilotes. Oh, sometime in the trees, he said. But I see them in the water. So sometimes when he's snorkeling in these freshwater rivers, he finds the spilotes under logs hunting for fish. Like when have you ever heard of anybody wow. you know giving fish to spilotes or giving them a large water basin because they're you know semi aquatic? And he said, oftentimes he finds them underneath logs looking for fish, and he says they're incredibly quick in the water. And uh, it's just one of those things that I never would have imagined. You know, I just I think of spilotes as this arboreal species of snake, and a, a different guy also in Belize said he finds them in open grasslands without any trees. And so that's another thing that to you know, take into consideration this open grasslands where the, the tallest thing is, you know, maybe three feet high. It's not a, you know, these large fruit trees or anything like that. It's very different habitat than you would imagine. So I think, uh, you know, but you also find them on a beach under an umbrella, you know, when you're in Mexico and yeah, yeah. You know, something like that. So yeah, it's, well, it's, it's funny it's, how those, like we have, um, the myths that are in the hobby that just sort of perpetuate like this, like this animal lives in the trees, this animal lives under the ground and, and they're just like, it's almost, it's like that telephone game. Like you never can find the person who started it. And we yeah, all just repeat these things and yeah. really there's no basis to it. It just is what it is. You know, somebody has done that for 20 years and that's what we say, but it's not true. Yeah. There's, um, so I do, I do some front of work in Mexico. I'm actually going back in a couple of weeks. And while we were down there, we were, um, hanging around with these cowboys in Mexico, and we were catching these Phrynosoma, uh, Phrynosoma ditmars. And um, 
of course, we're looking for snakes as well. And down there, they have Oxybelis aneus, the brown vine snake, um, which we can find in a very small part of the southern U.S., southern Arizona. Um, but they have you know, a really pointy face like other vine snakes. And their local myth down there is that, I, forget, I think they call them cow killers or something like that. It, I think it translates the name to cow killer. And they say they use their pointy face to poke in between the ribs of a cow and they go straight through them and out the other side. And I just, I'm thinking like, how did they possibly get, you know, this idea, you know, who started this? Where is that person? Yeah, yeah. got to ask. Yeah, exactly. You know, but, yeah. but everybody but just in that region believes it, you know, that's what they've heard. And maybe they've never seen it themselves, but. Uh, and you look face. at them, you're like, I could kind of see it. Like it's a pointy sharp head. Maybe they can do that. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, to, to actively say that they go in one side and out the other. And you know, it's just like, how did that start? And maybe, yeah, maybe I haven't spent enough time in Sonora, Mexico, and maybe they do <laughs> something like that. You know, it's, maybe it's one of those behaviors that, you know, me as an American has never seen, but I just couldn't imagine where it started from. And I think that maybe happened. they saw it after they lick the toads there, aren't the Sonoran desert toads, <laughs> yeah, the, like yeah, maybe. the DMT toads or something? <laughs> Which we're also, um, we did find several in that area. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, there's all those myths that are, you know, who knows where they pop up, but we definitely have them here, even when we think we're not talking about a myth, you know, that it's uh, animal care has is, is full of them. And it, just getting back to the barons for a second. Those-